my name is Alex and on behalf of Astranti Financial Training, please let me welcome you to this industry analysis video for the November 2016 operational case study and our sample company, Marici Power. Now the document which I'm going to be studying throughout this analysis is available for you to go through at your own pace. So during this video, I'm not going to be looking through the entire thing, but rather focusing on some key areas that I think are going to be crucial to your success during the exam. The whole point of this video then is to give you necessary focused information to give you the best chance of achieving to your full potential during the operational case study exam. So as we work our way through the document, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the industry history of solar power. And this makes up a considerable section of this document, but we're not going to go through the whole thing as I say. Rather, what we're going to do is focus on what I think is the key area, and that is the history around the year 2000. There are a number of reasons why I think that this millennial fever, as it's labelled in the document, is quite so important. And one of the principal ones is it's around this millennial age where thoughts with regards to environmentalism start to really come to the fore. This is where, rather than being a scientific concern regarding peak oil, we get widespread social concern among potential customers who'd like to do more on a personal level to move away from fossil fuel dependence. There are also a number of notable firsts during this period, such as the start of skyscrapers integrating solar panels into their design, as with the innovative, innovative four times square building, and this was when global installed installations breached 1000 megawatts for the first time, also known as 1 gigawatt. It's also around this time that Marici Power were founded, so we can get a real understanding of where this company comes from. Indeed, this is also around the time that First Solar was formed. At the time, First Solar was the world's largest manufacturer of solar panels and continues to be really dominant in the industry. So, from this genesis, if we think of it like that in 2000, this trend for solar increased from 2000 onwards, and this is seen with a number of high-profile instances in this 2005 to 2008 window, including when the Vatican decided to install solar panels, and this was mirrored by President Obama massively expanding the number of solar panels that were installed on the White House. So what we're moving on to consider here is a transition period for solar as we move away from this sudden birth around the year 2000 and progress throughout 2006 to 2010 when, as we can see, for example, the UK's solar capacity increased from 12 megawatts to 750 megawatts. This is important because we're understanding how Marici Power as a company presumably grew during this time and we're using the UK as a kind of yardstick to understand what may have happened in Freeland, another Western European country during this time. Indeed, this continued and a number of governments got on board with the idea of solar power, introducing tariffs. Interestingly, the pre-scene tells us that tariffs in Freeland were introduced in 2010, which is relatively late, given that tariffs were available in the UK, for example, from 2006-2007. What we can say in that being able to withstand a potentially tricky market up until 2010, when tariffs were introduced in Freeland, Marici Power evidently has staying power and is a durable company and brand. That said, we can see that between 2007 and 2011, the solar power industry grew at approximately 70% per year. So this is where we're really putting down roots as a company and where the company's establishing that brand. However, this narrative takes a bit of a turn between 2007 and 2011, peaking in 2011 when solar Chinese manufacture absolutely boomed, flooding the market with cheaper solar products. What this meant was that many markets were unable to compete and throughout 2011 we saw the bankruptcy of a number of previous industry giants. These include a company that I really like talking about called Solyndra who went bankrupt despite having access to over 500 million dollars in US government grants. This narrative of difficulty and challenging market 
conditions continues to this day, with further subsidy cuts happening throughout 2015, for example extensively in the UK and US. With one particular company suffering particularly badly because of this, the previously industry-leading Sun Edison, which had been described by the New York Times as a red-hot company in a red-hot space, crashed into bankruptcy in April 2016 as a direct result of having its profits fundamentally undermined by tariff and subsidy cuts made by the US government in November 2015. What I'd now like to move on to discuss is solar panels themselves and what we're going to do is going to look at the solar cell life cycle in some detail in order to understand why producing them is so challenging and in order to understand to a certain extent the business structure of Marici Solar. So here we see the product life cycle of a solar panel and one of the key things we have to state right at the start is the two driving forces behind desirability in a solar panel are the two factors of price and efficiency. As we can see here there are huge research costs in researching a panel and this is because it needs to have either incredible affordability or really good efficiency in order to break into the market. A great example of a panel that did this through having efficiency is the Insulite panel developed at the Lucerne Research Institute in Switzerland in 2016 which broke all previous efficiency records with 36.4%. What many companies do is to overcome these huge research costs. They research their panels in conjunction with an energy or oil company. For example, we know that Marici Power themselves come from the research arm of an oil company known as Salt Energy and as such they're fairly typical in this way. Other ways which companies can reduce their research costs include researching panels as a joint venture, although given that panel design is so critical to the success of a solar panel manufacturer it's very unusual for them to do this. So we see that we've got a panel and that it's popular and this leads us into the growth stage. During the growth stage the panel or cell gains popularity because of either its price and or efficiency. For example if we've got a panel that's as efficient as market leaders but costs half the amount, we know that customers will prefer that panel because it will therefore take them half the amount of time to recoup their initial investment. As a result of this popularity, of course, the cell or panel will then move to the maturity stage where it is popular and being widely purchased. During this stage, it will be lucrative for the company which developed it and as such we can expect Marici Power to be profiting from their product at this point. However, given those driving forces of efficiency and of price and the amount of research and technological development that goes into the solar industry as a whole, we know that it's only a matter of time before that panel becomes outdated as a competitor's is more efficient or is cheaper. As such, this maturity phase is of limited length and it's incredibly important that during this stage the panel is marketed extensively and the company does everything it can in order to sell as many of it as possible and to recoup those initial high research costs. It's also interesting at this stage to pause and remember that Marici Power actually have a really high inventory according to the pre-scene and this tells us that they could have a really high number of panels in stock. Given this appending threat of the decline phase, it's incredibly important that Marici Power try and sell more of those panels and reduce their inventory to a lower level, as otherwise, as we can see during the decline phase, those panels will become outdated and customers will no longer want to purchase them, having a drastic effect on the value of them as an asset. Just with one final thought with regards to this decline phase. If our panels are so outdated that they are no longer viable to be sold, it could be that they can be donated to charitable causes, which would be an excellent marketing ploy for Marici. For example, if they give these panels to charitable organisations, those charitable organisations will still be able to benefit from a reduction in their energy bills, and that association with the Marici Power name will increase their brand identity, and be good publicity. 
Having spoken about these twin driving forces of cost and efficiency, what I'd now like to focus on is just how chronic that driving force of cost is. And what I'm going to do in order to do that is focus on what's called the price evolution of solar panels. Now this particular diagram is in Australian dollars, but the three lines we can see there given your typical price, best price and system price of solar installations is a really good indication of why the price is so important as a driving force. As we can see, since 2007, which is now almost a decade, prices have been plummeting. This is great news for consumers because as prices get lower, we know that standard energy prices are actually raising and this means that solar PV installations are becoming more and more viable sources of alternative energy. However, this poses a number of challenges for Marici. Of course, they need to try and make their panels cheaper and cheaper in order for them to maintain their competitive edge. One of the challenges in doing this is that Marici Power do not produce their own polysilicon. Polysilicon is one of the key materials which goes into photovoltaic cells and indeed is principally what they're made out of. And so by being reliant on an external supplier to supply this photovoltaic substance, the company have little control over a large element of their costs. For example, if polysilicon prices continue to fall, and this is something we're going to come back to later during this video, it could be that Marici Power are trapped in a contract with polysilicon at a non-competitive price, meaning that they are unable to further lower the cost of their panels in order to maintain competition. One of the key driving forces behind this reduction in cost is the emergence of China as what is now the manufacturing hub of solar power as a whole. The biggest solar manufacturer in the world is called Trina Solar and they are just one of five Chinese manufacturers which make up the world's five biggest overall solar manufacturers. Such is the threat of Chinese solar and their ability to undercut the prices of the rest of the world that in 2013 the EU negotiated a trade deal imposing fairly punitive tariffs on Chinese companies wanting to import panels into the EU. This meant that companies such as Marici Power were able to continue producing their panels and were able to do this without the threat of having to drop their prices in order to compete. However, and this is something that would be really good to bring up during the exam, in January 2016, Trina Solar were able to negotiate themselves an exemption from that treaty, meaning that suddenly, in 2016, we may find that Marici Power have to suddenly fend off the threat of Trina Solar and their much cheaper solar panels. This is going to be a particular threat to Marici Power as we think about their traditional markets of commercial and domestic, whereby they're selling the solar panel or the solar panel system in order for it to be put on the roof of a small business or home. But what I'd now like to do is focus on a possible different market for them to enter, a different way in which they could sell their solar panels, which is something we could really bring up in the exam if we're talking about ways for them to be able to offer their panels in new ways. In order to do that, what we're going to consider is utility company involvement. Thank you for watching this Astranti financial training video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and more importantly, I hope you found it useful. Now, please allow me just to bring your attention to a few other products that we currently have on offer with regards to the case studies. Now, the first is our study text, and these are available for every single SEMA examination, and these will give you all of the theory that you need in order to really excel during the case study. We also offer a range of course videos, and these will help you with technique and with learning how to structure your answers in order to make sure that your knowledge is displayed in the best possible way during the exam. We also do the pre-scene analysis in which we look through the pre-scene for each case study in microscopic detail, picking out every little detail that could be worth marks and picking out what we think are the most likely topics for examiners to use during the exam. Similarly, we also offer an industry analysis, which, when used to the pre-scene analysis, 
gives you loads of industry information and this is all really good real world stuff that you can bring in to support your answers to make sure you give the very best answer possible. In checking that your exam is as good as it can possibly be, you may want to take one of our range of mock exams, which are designed to simulate as close as possible the experience you will have during the exam, and, through getting marking and feedback, will allow you to know just how close you are to getting the best possible marks. For those of you wanting even more in-depth tuition, we also offer a range of masterclasses in which you'll have the opportunity to ask questions within the Strand Tutor, and they will give you even more information in order to make your answers as good as possible. And finally, we offer our pass guarantee, meaning that even if the exam does not go quite as perfectly as it could have done for you, you're able to reset it again and make sure that you fulfil your full potential. Thank you very much for watching, and if you're interested in any more products, please visit www.astranti.com. Thank you.